I would like to concentrate mainly on the systemic approach to post-mortem examination in small ruminants. So I have organized my topic under these different uh, headings. Autopsy means to see for oneself. Usually autopsy is a term which is applied in human medicine. That is a human doctor conducting a post-mortem examination on human carcasses is called autopsy. Whereas necropsy is more applied in veterinary medicine, right? We veterinarians or a veterinary pathologist conducting the post-mortem of any animal for that matter can be termed as necropsy. But you know, this is the era of one health. Between veterinary medicine and human medicine, there is no distinguishing line. So off late, autopsy has been proposed as a term for post-mortem examination of any dead body for that matter, be it human or non-human. Whatever the case may be, whether we call it autopsy or necropsy, it is a very, very important thing. Although there is a saying that dead men tell no tales. In fact, for a pathologist, or for a veterinarian, it is the dead man, the dead is the dead animal or the dead carcass, which tells a lot of tales or a lot of stories. And based on these stories, which the carcasses tell us, we can in fact recreate what has happened during the life of that particular animal or individual. Okay. So the post-mortem examination as such, I don't need to define what post-mortem examination is being field veterinarians you all know the importance of post-mortem examination anyway it is an important tool for the diagnosis and prevention of diseases in farm animals especially to identify the disease at a very early stage and to take appropriate control and prevention measures post-mortem is very very important so anyway the post-mortem examination that we need to conduct either at the field level or in a post-mortem setting like the colleges or a laboratory, we need to conduct a complete and comprehensive and a systematic post-mortem examination. That's what is the objective of today's lecture. You know, during post-mortem examination, we are going to identify a lot of lesions and it is, you know, the interpretation of these findings that we actually see during post-mortem examination, which is very, very important. And it requires a lot of skill, knowledge, experience, as well as expertise. As field veterinarians, you should be in a position during post-mortem examination, you should be able to differentiate between normal and abnormal. And you should be able to say whether a particular lesion that you observe is whether it is relevant or incidental. And a change that you see, whether it is an autolytic change or a change due to the actual disease process. I would like to recall this statement, which my professor, Dr. S.J. Sheshadri, would always used to say in my classes. Loads of lesions lay buried in a cadaver. If only you have the eye to see it. That means to say, you know, a carcass, although it appears normal to our naked eyes, it would contain a loads of lesions. You should have the patience and the approach to identify these lesions. Loads of lesions lay buried in a cadaver, if only you have the eye to see it. We need to have the eye to locate and identify these lesions. Well, some general considerations as for the post-mortem examination is concerned. Ideally, a post-mortem examination should be conducted in a proper post-mortem facility, wherein you have got all the facilities, personal protection equipments, you know, proper disinfection facilities, proper carcass disposal facilities, like in a veterinary college or a Southern Regional Disease Diagnostic Laboratory or something like that. But, you know, although it is the pathologist who is supposed to conduct the post-mortem examination, I always opine that the field vet is always the best pathologist. I have had about 13 years of experience in the field and I can boldly say that it is a field vet who is the best veterinarian and he is the best pathologist as well. So never ever hesitate to conduct the postmortems at the field level or at the farm level. Conduct as many field postmortems or as many farm postmortems as possible, as frequently as you get it. And unless the situation warrants, you don't need to carry each and every carcass to the pathologist or the expert. Only 
if there is a situation if it demands the intervention of a pathologist definitely you can call the expert otherwise you are you know entitled you are you know you have the license to conduct as many postmortems and even give a postmortem report right and you can make use of what is called digital pathology this is the era of digital pathology right every one of you would possess beautiful uh, you know uh, mobile uh, photo mobile cameras and you can uh, take adequate photographs as well as videographs of the postmortems that you are doing and if at all you have any doubt you can consult the expert or the pathologist you can share the photos and videos that you have taken and you can arrive at a conclusive diagnosis okay and some limitations of course which are there at the field level especially you know the carcass disposal could be a problem at at times and you may be contaminating the environment during the process of post mortem examination and some of you may think that you lack that particular kind of an expertise to conduct the post mortem which need not be any any veterinarian can do the post mortem examination in a very very systematic manner for that matter so apart from these limitations definitely the veterinarians can easily conduct all postmortems at the field level well in any case when you decide to conduct a postmortem examination on the field make sure that you conduct a complete and systematic postmortem examination and after conducting the postmortem examination you collect the relevant samples for laboratory examination you need to carry sufficient amount of you know the sample containers swabs if required and then during the process of postmortem examination if at all you appreciate certain lesions take adequate photographs and sometimes even videographs also you can share them with the expert you never hesitate to consult the expert at any time during your uh, practice or during the postmortem examination you need to have a good rapport with the experts be it a pathologist in the veterinary college or some clinical laboratory or something like that okay and if you feel so that an expert intervention is required again never hesitate to call the expert particularly you know we rear sheep and goats at least in flocks right so whenever there is a disease the disease occurs as an outbreak not in individual animal so if the outbreak involves the death of large number of animals you may have to call the expert for exact investigation and if it is a veterinary legal case if there is an intervention of law then you need to call the experts and in the case of zoonotic diseases public health concerns and neurological disease disorders suppose you need to cut open the skull you need to expose the brain and spinal cord definitely it may not be very easy at the field level you will have to call the expert for such cases well once you start when you decide to do the post mortem examination on field make sure that you possess or you own appropriate personal protection equipment i am not referring to the ppe that that are used in you know human hospitals to treat a covid case or something like that if if you have good quality waterproof latex gloves a very good quality face mask some goggles to your eyes and aprons that will serve as the ppe for you i'm sure you can procure these things at the field level and the proper post mortem equipment is also very very important you need to procure a proper post mortem equipment which consists of at least two sharp post mortem knives two scissors one straight and one bent scalpels and bp blades some forceps bone cutters or rib cutters may not be required in all the cases if it is a lamb even a sharp post mortem knife knife would be sufficient you may have to require tissue cutting boards sample collection vials you know sterile swabs and all these things are required during the post mortem examination don't forget to take adequate biosecurity measures during and after the post mortem examination you need to disinfect the premises after the post mortem examination with maybe the phenyl or you know the quaternary ammonium compounds or weak uh, iodine solution or weak uh, uh formaldehyde solution or even potassium permanganate solution would be sufficient in some cases to disinfect the premises and most importantly you need to ensure the proper carcass disposal to avoid any sort of contamination right of course carcass disposal is the duty of the carcass owner you should educate the owner animal owners for proper carcass disposal well this is the picture of 
the postmortem kit. You know, these knives, they may look like domestic knives, but still, if they are sharp enough, if they are of good quality, stainless steel, you can use them for postmortem examination. Similarly, good quality stainless steel scissors, the forceps, a BP handle and the blades, and of course, the sample collection vials, sample collection vials for histopathology, for bacteriology or uh, mycology or whatever, and then the swabs for again bacteriology. Okay. Well, having learned about these general considerations, some tips for effective postmortem examination. You know, this is the first tip that I can give you. Conduct the postmortem examination as early as possible. If you encounter the death of a sheep or a goat in a farm or in the field, you take the decision to conduct the postmortem examination at the earliest, latest within 24 hours. This is, this is because you all know that the carcasses, they are going to putrefy. There are going to be a lot of autolytic changes which set in over the a period of time and these autolytic changes can interfere with your identification of the lesions right and of course i have already told you about the kit that you need to require and possess conduct the postmortem examination only in proper lighting exactly in bright sunlight so if it is night you should always you know postpone the postmortem examination and if it is an emergency you can do it, but adequate lighting should be provided. Okay. And, you know, don't be in a hurry. You know, post, you know, I, I know that the veterinarians are always in a hurry. They are, they, are, they are having a lot of works to do, but still post-mortem examination is something which should not be done in a hurry. Give sufficient time for your post-mortem examination and examine each and every part of the carcass. Collect a detailed history with, 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 with regard to the clinical signs, the treatment that has been given. Be systematic and consistent in your post-mortem approach. I'm going to tell you a systematic approach, which is according to the AHDB manual. Uh, but you may practice that particular approach or you may have your own approach. One thing is you need to have the same approach or the same order during each post-mortem examination. Suppose you examine the head first, the, the thorax next and the abdomen in the end. So that should be the order you need to follow during each post-mortem examination. And as for the solid organs like the liver, the heart, the kidneys, other things are concerned, you need to make multiple incisions. Even if it appears normal, you will have to incise the organs completely so that if you can you can visualize something which is embedded within the parenchyma of the organs and all hollow organs need to be opened meticulously for example the heart the gallbladder urinary bladder uterus the git you need to open all parts very meticulously invariably you need to examine the serosal surfaces like the pericardial surface the peritoneal the thoracic cavity and all that and of course, you should never forget to examine the visible lymph nodes also. Well, you know, you, 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 you could be overzealous at times. Sometimes you may handle or mutilate the surfaces and tissues too much and you need to avoid such things. Avoid overhandling or mutilation of the tissues during postmortem examination. Be gentle and nice even to the you know, organs, although they are dead, okay? Collect appropriate and relevant samples during each postmortem examination, which, which would uh, help you to, you know, uh, confirm your diagnosis. During postmortem examination, you can arrive at a tentative diagnosis for sure, but you need to always confirm it with a laboratory test. Of course, you need to take adequate photographs of the lesions and if required, even the radiographs. And above all, you need to take all safety precautions during the postmortem examination. Personal safety is very, very important. The knife that you use, the scissors that you use, sometimes you may damage your own organs. And I told you about the personal protection equipment. If you don't use it, you may be landing up in some problems. So please, please do wear the personal protection equipment.